After two solid months exploring the land of enchantment, we finally said our goodbyes and headed for home in America's Dairyland, the Cheesehead State. Largely known to the outside world for its cultural fascination with all things dairy, beer, brats, and the Green Bay Packers, believe it or not, there's more waiting to be discovered in this Midwestern state than what you might think. With Earth Day just around the corner, I set out to explore a curious little town in the middle of nowhere. You know, the type of small town you stumble upon when driving off the beaten path usually forgotten once the last of its sights hits your rearview mirror. What I discovered in that sleepy northwestern Wisconsin town may surprise you. I know it did me. And just like that, we're in Wisconsin. Hey sightseers, Sightseeing Sally here. As you can see, I'm by myself. And that's because I left Marty at home. I know, cue the sad music. Marty's not going to be along on this adventure. But that's not to say he won't be in any future adventures. It's just I'm on my way back from a little mother-daughter bonding time. A boondoggle, if you will, over in Minneapolis. And since Earth Day is just right around the corner, in fact, probably by the time that you watch this, it'll already have passed us on by because today of all days happens to be April 20th, 420, if you know what I mean. For those of you so inclined to celebrate, but I digress because the point is I'm here in Clear Lake, Wisconsin, which happens to be the hometown of Earth Day founder, Gaylord Nelson. That's right, this little town up here in northwestern Wisconsin with a population of, oh, roughly 1,100 people has ties to Earth Day. And not only that, but baseball's National Hall of Famer, Burley Grimes, was born here. Can you believe that? Two fairly well-known individuals respected in their trades hail from this small town up in the middle of nowhere, Wisconsin. Crazy, huh? I mean, come on, Wisconsin's normally just associated with beer brats and the Packers. And not Baseball Hall of Famers. I know, Milwaukee Brewers fans are getting ready to throw eggs at me. Please don't hate me. I haven't paid attention to the Brewers since, oh, I don't know, I was like eight years old. In any case, you're definitely not associated with Earth Day. I'll give you that. Let's move on. I know that it's raining. The weather's likely not going to get any better anytime soon. I just got to suck it up and deal with it. I figured since my whole reason for being here has to do with Gaylord Nelson being the father of Earth Day, we would come and pay our respects to him first. And looks like we didn't have to go too far. Long concerned about the impacts of pollution on the environment, Gaylord Nelson came up with the idea to organize an environmental teach-in at college campuses after witnessing the effects of a massive oil spill in Santa Barbara, California. First celebrated on April 22, 1970, this date was chosen specifically to maximize participation of college students across the United States. As it turned out, on that first Earth Day 53 years ago, 20 million Americans showed up at rallies protesting against the deterioration of the environment. Billed as a huge success, the first Earth Day sparked the creation of the EPA, OSHA, and the Clear Air Act, among other things. I wonder if he had any idea the impact his contributions to saving the environment would have so many years later. By 1990, Earth Day had become a global event with 200 million people 
in 141 countries celebrating. Today, Earth Day is no small affair, with over a billion people each year marking the day as the springboard for changing behavior and policies. Earth Day has grown from one Wisconsin man's idea to teach college students about air and water pollution into a worldwide call of action to save our planet. Since we're already here, I figured we might as well track down Burley Grimes' grave as well. Because interestingly enough, in his later years, he moved back to his hometown and is buried here too. The last of the legal spitball pitchers, Burley Grimes grew up on a farm just outside of Clear Lake. Nicknamed Old Stubblebeard for refusing to shave on days he pitched, Grimes got his start as a professional baseball player in 1912 at Eau Claire. Within four years, he worked his way into the major leagues, pitching first for the Pittsburgh Pirates. We've come to that inevitable fork in the road. Do I go to the left? or to the right. If only Karnak the Great were here to help me with that decision. But I'm on my own, so I think I'm gonna go to the right and see where that leads me. Wouldn't you know it, I should have turned left instead of right. And it only took walking through the entire cemetery before finally finding the grave of Burley Grimes. If you look closely on his headstone, you can see it says Hall of Fame. Elected into National Baseball League's Hall of Fame in 1964, Burley is one of few pitchers to have worked over 600 games, start over 400 games, and complete over 300 games. During his 19 years as a pitcher, Grimes compiled 35 shutouts, struck out 1,512 batters, and collected 270 wins. Presenting the lake that the town is named for. Unlike Lake Arthur, New Mexico, where there is no lake to be found, here in Clear Lake, there actually is a lake. I'd be willing to bet that on a gorgeous summer, sunny afternoon, the lake is as clear as a bell. Because even on a day like today, you can see the bottom from here. Not only that, supposedly their drinking water is superior to any other water around in that they don't have to treat it. I wonder what the people in Wabino would say to that. Clear Lake isn't the only body of water here in town. There also happens to be another lake called Mud Lake, which you can see out in front of me. At least according to old historical records. Apparently, in more recent times, Mud Lake has been more of a marsh. But because this past winter had so much precipitation, as you can see, Mud Lake has been resurrected. Well, our next step is going to be trying to track down the boyhood home of Gaylor Nelson. Not being from around here, I had to go stop at the library and see if I could get directions. And unfortunately, the librarian isn't from around here. Plus, you know how Midwesterners, Midwesterners are with their directions. I'm not exactly sure I'm going to be able to find it, but we'll give it a whirl. Supposedly, all I have to do is find the bandstand and go from there. Well, I think I found it. Let's go take a closer look so you can see I'm not all making this up. Looks like we'll be able to stand over here on the sidewalk so you can see the sign leaning up against the house that says, former home of Senator Gaylord Nelson. 
because not only was Gaylord Nelson the founder of Earth Day, he was also a senator, both at the state and national level, plus he's a former governor of our state. Whether you agree with his policies, besides the point, all this is meant to is show you something that no other town in America can lay claim to, and that is the founder of Earth Day grew up here. Interestingly enough, the founder of Earth Day and a Baseball Hall of Famer aren't the only notable characters to come from Clear Lake. Once there was a wrestler by the name of Johnny Mucci who was popular with the town, though in reality he hailed from Cumberland, 20 some miles away. Then there are the Paulson brothers, twins who invented a unique style of bean picker when they were 15 only to later become expert Civil War cannon makers commissioned by the National Park Service and many others in need of authentic looking cannons. By the way, the bandstand that I mentioned as per the directions to finding Gaylord Nelson's house is right there. And coincidentally, it's celebrating its 100th anniversary or birthday, however you want to call it. Built in 1923 by Stadler and Pearson Construction, the bandstand consists of field stones brought into Clear Lake from area farms. An important landmark, reminiscent of the town's early history, the cobblestone bandstone once was used for concerts and in more recent times, ice cream socials. According to one source, it is said to look as good as it did on the day it was built. Since we're here because of Earth Day, I as well do my part. Of course, there's more here in this town than what I've already shown you, but before we go any further, I have a couple of quick shout outs to give. Special thanks to Robert from Albuquerque, Sue from Illinois, and Stephen Lynn from Washington for all tipping our trip jar. Yay! Thanks guys, we really appreciate you helping us get out to all these awesome places. Now, back to exploring Clear Lake. Seeing as the rain isn't gonna let up anytime soon, let's go take a quick gander down their main street or downtown area, see what businesses are here today, right after I get rid of this lovely bag of garbage. Now that I got that out of the way, let's see what we got here. In front of me is the Clear Lake Clinic Amory Hospital. At the corner of 4th Street and 3rd Avenue, it is believed back in the day, this location used to have a building that contained the office of Dr. Wells. And across the street is the Vision Source Eye Clinic. Originally the location of the Ward House, after that burned down in 1944, the brick building you see here was built. Starting out as a restaurant, it later became the Bank of Clear Lake for a time. Next door to that is the Century 21 Real Estate Office and the Cabin Break Room. Open Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to close. They serve up eats with names like the welder, the bartender, and the physical therapist. Now something you'll find really fascinating about Clear Lake is that there is actually a movie called Clear Lake. A film produced by one of the town's own. The story is about a couple of friends that come back to their hometown to face the horrors that are there. Or something like that. Released in 2009, much of the movie was apparently filmed locally, including scenes inside the former high school. By the way, I've never seen the movie, so I can't speak to how good it is. But if you have, let me know in the comment section below. This, by the way, happens to be one of the oldest freestanding buildings still intact from the 1800s. Built in 1899, 
using stone from John Palmer's farm, this building was originally E.M. Dolan's blacksmith shop, now owned by Compass Realty. Inside you can still find the iron rings that were used when tying up the horses. I know, I'm sitting here in my car instead of out there walking around filming. But I am sopping wet and chilled to the bone. So I thought for this next little bit, this next little ditty, I would take you down a virtual walk through memory lane, so to speak, sharing some of the pictures and the history that way. Nearly 150 years since Clear Lake was established, the town has changed considerably from its early days. Like many other towns in the North Woods of Wisconsin, Clear Lake was formed upon the arrival of the railroad and the building of sawmills. Logging and farming dominated the area. If you were able to jump into a time machine and walk these streets during the town's early years, you would find places like the Terrapin Saloon, Albertson's Garage, the Hannon Furniture Store, the Mercantile, Art Peterson's Store, and A.A. Holiday's Store. If I'm not mistaken, this, I believe, is the location of the old creamery. Though it looks a bit different than it did back in the day, the creamery has been an important part of the community since its inception. Now the location of Advanced Food Products, a company known for low-acid aseptic technology in packaging foods, the creamery first started as a co-op for local dairy farmers back in 1906. One last place I want to share with you before I skidoo on home, and that is specialty coating systems. And you're probably going, why are you showing me this place? And that's because at one time they helped the Smithsonian Institute preserve the feathers on a big bird suit. And there you have it. The extraordinary, remarkable, and occasionally forgotten anecdotes that make up only a small part of this sleepy town's history. Proof that there's more waiting to be discovered here in Wisconsin than just beer, brats, and goofy cheeseheads. <laughs>